So right now on the season, he's just one for seven, which is 14.3%. But you can expect to see him knocking down those more consistently as he gets more into regular season uh, shape and in that right kind of mindset. John Teske, so far just one for seven for three-point line so far this year. Still adjusting to the length of the new extended three-point line in men's NCAA college basketball this year. Last year, he was 23 of 77 from beyond the arc a 30% clip, but tonight, looking to improve on the one for seven, 2019, 2020 mark. As both teams step onto the court, and we have tip off at the Chrysler Center. Michigan gets it first. Again, Eli Brook flanking Xavier Simpson in the backcourt tonight. Again, Michigan enters this game 3-0. So far, all their games at home. Simpson early on the baseline, a guard, guard connection, and Eli Brooks with the finish. As we mentioned, Michigan's 3-0 record so far. They survived the torrent Appalachian State second half run to hold off the Mountaineers by eight on opening night. With the ball right now for Houston Baptist is Ty Dalton on the wing. The junior from Houston. Local kid driving against Nunez and left it a little short. Getting in transition. Livers gets a wide open look from the wing and Isaiah Livers gives the Wolverines an early 5-0 lead in the first minute of the contest. He's feeling great about that shot then. You could see a great deal of pleasure for Isaiah Livers knocking down that one early. He was out here practicing before anybody else on the court, knocking down those threes consistently. He's looking absolutely fantastic this season. Jalen Gates, and he has a knack for taking tough shots. Looks like that one's a two, his foot on the line. But Jalen Gates leading this Houston Baptist team. 20.7 points per game, also leads the entire Southland Conference, shooting 42% from beyond there. Is Adrian Nunez from the corner. What's so intriguing about Jalen Gates then is that, yeah, absolutely, he averages 20.7 points per game, 42% on the three. But he has zero assists this season, three games in. And last season, over 28 games, only had 13 assists. He averages less than half an assist per season on his career. So don't be expecting to see too many fancy passes from him coming out of this game. Did take what was perhaps considered an ill-advised shot on the last possession. Did go through, but you mentioned the lack of assists, the lack of ball movement. Gates deflected, it looked like it went off Houston Baptist coach Ron Cottrell. Nevertheless, the Huskies take over. This is Ian Dubose. Moves it for Gates and did not move that pivot foot. Jalen Gates seemingly breaking his own ankles there, which isn't something you see all that often in basketball. Point guards, Miles Pierre and Xavier Simpson matching up. This is Pierre out to Dubose for three. And Ian Dubos at the end of the clock could not get it to go. Xavier Simpson, such a fantastic ball handler, great facilitator, but you can't overlook his defense. He's an absolute hound on defense, and it's incredible to see. He hates being scored on, and it's incredibly evident in the way that he got plays. And Ian Dubos picks up his first foul of the night. Xavier Simpson will go to the line for two. Simpson so far just three for stick on throws on the year. Yeah, historically not the best shooter on this. Definitely not afraid of taking tough shots. He's it's good at getting. Xavier Simpson now a senior guard. Stick though. Lima, Ohio. Xavier Simpson this year generally improvement on the stat so far. We've got 11.3 points per game this season in comparison to just 8.8 .8 last season. Shooting a better percentage overall, overall as well at 46.7%. His three-point percentage is down a little bit, but that's to be expected. He's not the best three-point shooter on this team. But his assist, Ben, is what I really want to talk about. 7.3 assists a game. That's exactly what you want from a Big Ten point guard. Great facilitator and scoring in double digits and an excellent defender. Definitely one of the best point guards in the nation. Got seven, three point, three, seven point three assists per game measure leads the Big Ten. 
as every team going through the bulk of their non-conference schedule at this point in the year. Eli Brooks from the corner, and Eli Brooks continues his production in the starting lineup, the junior from Pennsylvania, shooting 47% from behind the arc, and that pass too tall for Gomes underneath. That'll be a turnover, the second of the game for the Huskies, the third of the game for HU. Huskies looking a little bit lost out there right now, Ben. For a team like them, all you can hope to do early is hope that Michigan doesn't get into too much of an offensive rhythm. Michigan expected to win this game significantly, and they're off to quite a start. That a nothing run for the Wolverines over the past minute. A good perseverance there by Ian Dubose. Dubose has his first point tonight. Dubose, junior from Durham, North Carolina, averaged 16.3 points per game, which is 28% field goal mark on the year. John Esky at the top of the key. Brooks has step and the floater a little too strong. Off glass, cracked down by the Huskies. The Bows tried the bullet pass into Gomes. Broken up. Nunez is wide open, takes the second shot, and again, Adrian Nunez just can't find the range so far in his Michigan career. Yeah, unfortunately that Adrian Nunez is not able to knock down the shot. The fantastic vision from Xavier Simpson to find that open pass. Leaving him wide open, just not able to knock it down. Our first media timeout of the night, the under 16 break. Michigan up 12 to 4 on BTN Plus. Spent his rookie season with the Lakers last year, now on the Washington Wizards. Franz Wagner, the initial diagnosis, at least on from October 21st, was four to six weeks. Four weeks was this past Monday. Six weeks would include Michigan showdown on December 3rd with number two ranked Louisville. And the Wolverines definitely hope to have him back by then. Absolutely. Coach Howard was saying yesterday in the press conference that will be going to the Bahamas with them because he's a part of this Michigan family, but not to expect him back for any of those games. He didn't give us a timeline on when we should expect him to be back exactly, as Grace was saying. But it's great to see that he'll be going with the team and they'll be working with that chemistry. Because no doubt, coming from another country, he's had the advantage of having his brother come here too. But it must be nice for him to get to know his new teammates better and really feel part of this family bond. Wagner out. That leaves for Adrian Nunez to step into that starting lineup. Backdoor cut by Livers. Looks like he got fouled going up. Livers take his first free throws of the night. Foul was for Houston Baptist Juan Murphy, who just entered the game, the 6'5 sophomore from North Carolina. Isaiah Livers. All right, my nats are on. Currently, he has 15 points a game, shooting 50.5% from the field, nearly 47%. Really impressive from him. One thing that has surprised me, Ben, so far about Isaiah Livers is that he's averaging just 3.7 rebounds a game. Coming into the season, Livers talked about how rebounds is, his rebounding numbers from last season weren't good enough for him. And part of the reason why he worked so hard on his athleticism was so that he could come back this season and get those rebounding numbers up. But they're actually a little bit lower than they were last season, admittedly. Again, we have a small sample size for now. So I'd expect him to try and see those rebounding numbers come up. Jalen Gates. Gates, we've seen the other example of the ill-advised shooting, a terrible shot, probably looking to draw the foul as Simpson takes advantage on the other end with a layup with the left hand. But back on the other end, Jalen Gates 
sometimes you just wonder what he's thinking out there. Well, Jalen Gates taking the James Harden approach to scoring points here, where you can average 21 points a game, but he might have to put up 40 points tonight to do it. Nunez now 0 for 3 from the field, 0 for 3 from behind the arc. And you mentioned Isaiah's, Isaiah Livers' rebounding prowess as a senior in high school. He averaged 14 rebounds a game. So the potential is definitely there for Livers to increase that rebounding average. Great hands by the Wolverines. Getting the passing lane for the interception. Nunez will try again. And this time, Adrian Nunez finally gets one to go. A player who scored just three points in all of his freshman season. But for now, matching that total in tonight's game. It's great to see Adrian Nunez getting more minutes. He talked about at the beginning of the season that he'd really worked on his jump shot through the offseason. And you can definitely tell it's one smooth, fluid motion. And you could say that for a lot of this Michigan team. Isaiah Livers has one of the best jump shots in college basketball, I'd argue. Incredibly smooth, no hitches. There's Teske with an offensive board. Nunez will pull a long one and just off the mark. Great unselfishness on that play prior to the offensive rebound as Nunez had a look but gave it up to Eli Brooks who could not connect. Michigan takes back over up 15. Nunez again getting a shot up. One for six now for Adrian Nunez. We had an incredible angle of that pass there from Xavier Simpson, Ben. He threaded the needle through those players. Benjamin Boko for the back for the Huskies. Now Simpson alley for Livers. The connection between Simpson and Livers and head coach Ron Cottrell for Houston Baptist wants a timeout. Michigan on a 16 to 2 run over the last four and a half midnight. Three for three from the field. A great start for the juniors. Yeah, absolutely. Livers really Loving the fact that he's getting tons more minutes than he did last season. Last season he had 22.6 minutes per game. That six man, one Michigan six man uh, player of the year. Just a fantastic player. And really relishing the fact that he's getting more minutes. He's averaging 34.3 minutes a game this season as opposed to just 22.6 previously. Simpson tries one from behind the arc and Xavier Simpson knocks it down. Simpson shooting just 27% from behind the arc this year, but a great sign for him as his first attempt of the night goes down. Yeah, that's always great to see. You know it's going to be a good game for Michigan if Xavier Simpson's hitting his shots. It doesn't always happen, especially from the three-point line, but when he's hitting, you know it's going to be a good offensive game for the Wolverines. And it seems like everything is clicking on all cylinders so far for the Wolverines. Arguably their best start of the season, jumping out to a 24-4 advantage. And so far, Houston Baptist with seven turnovers on the night. Just two for 11 from the field. Not a great combination to come into a hostile road environment as Michigan with just one miscue so far in the first seven-plus minutes. Yeah, an interesting stat, and uh, Miles Pierre, number four of HBU, actually averages 5.3 turnovers a game this season. Certainly not a stat to be proud of, and I'm sure one that he's going to be working to bring down. Miles Pierre, the freshman point guard, a four-year letter winner in high school for HBU, as Uloco finishes with the left hand. HBU finally finding something there, a dominant run from Michigan. Yeah, that ends a four-and-a-half-minute scoring drought for the Huskies. The 14-2 run Brooks, over the last. And Brooks finishes off a beautiful pass from John Teske. It's great to see this Michigan offense really clicking, Ben, especially because Coach Howard talked at the beginning of this season about how it was going to take a while for this offense to really get rolling, and that's definitely... Team Ohio Mr. Basketball 2018 most improved on the Michigan team and the 2019 Michigan MVP and just an invaluable player for this round. Absolutely. He has three straight games of six-plus assists so far this season. He's also the 10th Wolverine to surpass 400 assists through his career, and he's the seventh all-time with 453, and no doubt he'll be racking up more of those as this season progresses. Simpson tonight already with seven points, four rebounds, three assists, doing it all as Ryan Gomes looked like he might have been in the cylinder there on that offensive putback. But it counts nonetheless, and HBU's deficit is 20. 
Livers, no doubt in that shot, hits a three from the wing to continue his amazing start. The first Wolverine into double digit scoring tonight, now with 12. He has not missed a shot, he is four for four. Ian Dubose finds a little space in the paint, could not finish. Foul called underneath, gonna stay on this end. Livers is the kind of player who can really take over a game on offense when everything is working for him. I don't know whether he fully realizes that, but I think this season could really be a breakout for him. He's got everything you could want from an offensive basketball player. He can drive well. He has a fantastic vertical. He can throw down huge jams, as we've talked about in the past. And he can consistently knock down that three-point shot at nearly 50%. It's everything you could possibly want for an offensive player. And he's got the height, too. That was a nice move by Ryan Gomes, 6'10 center. West Minster, Maryland, the transfer from Mount St. Mary's as Simpson is two for two tonight from behind the arc. A great sign from Xavier Simpson, who, as you mentioned, is always out early practicing that long ball. That one's been tipped out of bounds. Looks like it knocked off a Wolverine on its way out. And again, it will stay on the husk end of the floor. Xavier Simpson, such a fantastic player for these Wolverines. Juan Howard said that he always knows the right things to say. He's a basketball genius, and that's one of the reasons why he has so many assists. He has su he's such a high IQ player. He's always able to find those open looks for his teammates. And that time as the defender came out to him, running out on the perimeter, he took that space inside to drive to the rim. He threw the foul on Ryan Gomes. And for Ryan Gomes, first foul of the night. Simpson goes back to the line where he knocked down his first two earlier in the contest. Impressive that Michigan currently has two players on this game, 100% from the field. Xavier Simpson and Isaiah Livers. In overall shooting 60% so far in this first half, 12 of 20. And entering the game for the Wolverines is the freshman Cole Bajima who has seen limited action so far in this year as Simpson second, missed the first, but splits the pair. And as we talked about Cole Bajima, the freshman guard from Linden, Washington, a combo guard who's known for his range, just hasn't got much of an opportunity to showcase that range just yet. But with Michigan enjoying a 35 to 10 lead, head coach Jawan Howard feels comfortable enough insert him into this lineup. Philip McKenzie for HBU who gets blocked at the rim and it's going to go out of bounds to the Wolverines end. Yeah, Coach Powell has been fortunate at the ease of this easy schedule, the ease of the schedule so far for the Wolverines. Playing at home also a big advantage. Gives them an opportunity to try out a lot of different offensive schemes, a lot of different lineup. So that as the season progresses, he knows which players work well together. So when it comes down to those crunch time moments, he's going to know exactly who to put in. HPU, nowhere near as fortunate. Uh, nine of the team's first time games uh, this season will be played away from home. And eight of the nine non-conference games are also away. So a definitely challenging season for HPU, but they've always been a team that likes to rise to a challenge consistently doing better than they're projected to at the beginning of each season. Yeah, you mentioned HBU schedule. Head coach Ron Cottrell said that we've got to approach this non-conference as preparation for the conference schedule. He specifically cited the game against Houston on November 26th as a great opportunity for them to showcase themselves. But a rough start to the season nonetheless for HBU on that last Michigan possession. Simpson, who looked so good on his first two three-point attempts, came up with air wide left of the rim on his third attempt. The Wolverines take back over on offense. This is David Julius, the sophomore, who Grace discussed in the open with a little floater. He cannot finish. Both tracks down. The first 10 minutes of this half are anything to go by at all. You can expect this to be a very high-scoring game for the Wolverines. HPU also usually a very high-scoring team. They're averaging 75.7 points per game 
as a team this season. The issue, however, is that they're allowing their opponents to score 92.7 points per game. That was an aggressive take by the sophomore Brandon Johnson here. Slightly late call by the referees as there was contact all over his forearms, but John Jr. will earn the trip to the line. Tonight's referees, Larry Serrato, Michael Kitts, and Brooke Wells here in Ann Arbor tonight as John Jr. This is the first. He is two for four before that attempt from the line so far this season. Yeah, John Jr. averages 4.2 minutes per game last season. That number's up to 17 as him and Adrian Nunez, as well as Colin Castleton, sort of rotate through this lineup before Franz Wagner gets back from injury. You can expect to see all three of them take a little bit of a hit in minutes when he comes back, but no doubt enjoying this. Brandon Jones Jr. with four points per game so far this season, shooting 45.5% from the field. Dubose, who took an ill-advised three on the last session. A little short on his mid-range jumper. Eli Brooke. Bajima, a little pull-up jump shot, and Cole Bajima gets his first points as a Wolverine. He has previously played just one minute on the season, and that was in garbage time in the Wolverines' previous game against Elon. But good to see for the freshman. Absolutely, and such a smooth stroke on that jump. But you could see as he rose up, part of what makes such a fantastic jump shot, I think, is the ability to hang in the air and compose yourself before releasing. And he had exactly that. And we're going to keep it here during this break for a little trivia action. Now, just before the break, Josh, do you have any ideas about the, form, uh, the other three former NBA players who are currently head coaches at their alma mater? Uh, ben, the only one that I can think of is Penny Hardaway for Memphis, just because they've been in the news so recently with the James Wiseman decision from the NCAA. So Penny Hardaway is one of them, I know that for sure. The other two, I'm not sure. The other two besides Penny Hardaway, who is currently at Memphis, are Patrick Ewing at Georgetown and Aaron McKee at Temple. So that's Jawan Howard, Penny Hardaway, Patrick Ewing, and Aaron McKee. And you did mention Penny Hardaway is dealing with the ongoing battle with the NCAA for James Wiseman's eligibility. They've most recently ruled that he will have to miss 12 games. As Michigan is coming back to the court tonight. Defends the Huskies well underneath. The Huskies will retain with 15 on the shot clock. The latest run for the Wolverines is 7-0 over the past 3 minutes and 23 seconds. HPU just looking totally lost out there right now. They recently played Texas Tech and actually had a fantastic start to the game. They went on a 9-0 scoring run to start. But then unfortunately for them, the rest of the game went very similarly to the way that this Michigan game has gone so far. And they ended that game losing 74 to 103. If you discount the first two minutes of that last matchup between the Huskies and Texas Tech, who were, by the way, last year's national runners-up, losing to Virginia in the national championship game. But if you discount those first two minutes, Houston Baptist was outscored by 38 in the remaining 38 minutes of the contest as Dubose misses his first free throw of the game. Fun little note about Ian Dubose, 6'4", junior guard, is cousin Taylor Rooks played basketball at Harvard for her undergrad, and they played one year as a graduate transfer last season in Michigan women's basketball program. A fun little connection there between HBU and UM. Debo splits, the, Debo splits the pair. Yeah, DeBose doing, doing what he does best. That he gets to the line about seven times per game and shoots the free throw at 77%, which makes up somewhat for his 28% field goal per percentage on the season. Brooks' little turnaround jumper missed. And HP looking to come the other way. This is Gates in the corner, and Jalen Gates going off the scoring prowess. Got a great look there, got set up nicely, and knocked it down. Gates now up to five points on the night. He's the leading scorer for HP, who has amounted just 14 points the majority of this first half as Castleton got a nice feed. Left a little short, but on the follow, gets it, and one. 
nice resilience by Colin Castleton. Colin Castleton, another one of those guys getting a lot more minutes, he's in. Really great job from Castleton. With a little pump fake, drew the man, went up for that first shot, didn't quite make it, grabs his own offensive board, puts it back in, and gets the N1. Castleton, the sophomore from Daytona Beach, Florida. Fleets the N1, and those are his first three points of the contest. Castleton, who has gained about 25 pounds working, working with Michigan strength and conditioning coach John Sanderson since arriving on campus. Definitely looked a little more, more in game shape there as Dubose was arguing for a tip, but no such luck. And it's the ninth turnover of the game for Ian yeah, Dubose actually calling to the referee that the, the ball had come off Brandon Jones Jr.'s hand, and I think he might have actually been right. Castleton again on the offensive boards and using his 6'11 frame to clean up underneath. Castleton now with five points and three rebounds. It's a great game for Castleton, usually averaging just four points per game this season, already exceeding that. Julius Lefter for Simpson, inside to Castleton, and Castleton continues his own personal 7-0 run, leading the charge for the Wolverines, who have 45 points on the board with five minutes left in the first half as Loco scores again for the Huskies. Uh, back to Michigan's offense, they have not cracked 80 points so far this year, scored 79 twice, looking to be on pace for that so far tonight. Yeah, Ben, something something tells me that they might just reach that 80 points tonight with the way this game is going so far. Julius from East Lansing, he was that open, and the Husky defense did not rotate to Julius. Takes advantage, his first points of the night, and a foul called on the other end. It's going to be on Brandon Johns Jr. Johns Jr. picks up his second foul, but there you see the ability of Julius off the bench. Absolutely. David DeJulius has been fantastic this season, averaging 6.3 points a game on 46% shooting and shooting 38% from the, uh, the three-point line as well. He's been an essential member of this Michigan team, and it's clear that he's really enjoying himself getting more minutes now as well. Bose drives inside. And on the rebound, a foul called on Zach Yayemi, 6'9 freshman for the Huskies. And Michigan is in the bonus, so they will make the walk to the other end. A couple of free throws, or a one and one, excuse me. HBU players look very disheartened, and you can't really blame them. Being down 48-16 with four minutes left in the first half, it's going to be a rough rest of the game, but it's going to say a lot about them as a team, the way that they put themselves up morale-wise at the half, and see what they can do afterwards. Castleton misses the front end of the one and one Michigan perhaps making a little national statement, the performance so far in this first half, not ranked any of the weeks so far in this year's AP poll as Ian Dubose able to knock one down from downtown. But Michigan giving 11 votes in this week's AP poll, AP poll, not enough to crack the top 25. But if they keep putting up performances like they have in this first half, they are well on their way to making the poll. Yeah, rare sight in recent years to not see. Livers got the bounce off the front of the rim and able to connect. That is. Livers his third three of the night. He's up to 15 points. And Josh, you're welcome to continue your point. Absolutely. Yeah, just a rare sight to see Michigan not ranked in the top 25. But my goodness, Isaiah Livers just cannot miss tonight. I don't know if any of the cameras picked it up, but Livers was actually talking to Ty Dalton on the HPU team. And he, I think he was laughing about the fact that he got that lucky bounce. I think he knows that he can't miss tonight. Everything going the Wolverines way for sure. Nice job by Dubose crashing the offensive glass. So just too much interior length for the Wolverines. Tries a three and splashes it right in the face of Adrian Nunez. Well, as Isaiah Livers is heating up, this is a great opportunity to talk about some of his tattoos. So Isaiah Livers has two Goku tattoos. For those who don't know, Goku is an anime character. And essentially, when Goku 
goes into a sort of beast mode where he takes on whoever he wants to take on fighting wise he goes what is called super saiyan and isaiah livers when i talked to him at the beginning of this season said that he was hoping to go super saiyan this season he has a tattoo of baby goku on the inside of his arm he'd improvement it was still gonna take a while to work into it what he thought needed an improvement if the pick and roll was going so well and he simply said that there's always things to improve on there's always things that they can get better at and he talked about their shooting percentages overall and also about how they can attack the paint better so i think maybe expect to see the wolverines attack the paint a little bit more in that second half again offensively about middle of the pack in most categories so far in the big ten averaging 76 points per game so far in the year that ranks sixth in the conference and your second in collective field goal percentage as Johns with a nice finish with the left hand. But back to my point, second in field goal percentage overall as a team, the Wolverines are, but no individual in the top 10 in the conference. Jalen Gates with a pull up, rims in and out, and it seems like it's been that kind of night so far for the Huskies. The Huskies, Huskies usually a very fast offensive team. And this is Nunez. Yes, has been putting them up in this first half. He's gotten the opportunities, but just one of eight thus far from downtown. Teske working inside and just a little bit off, but he'll go back to the free throw line. Excuse me, he'll go to the line for the first time tonight. Teske, a quiet offensive first half, just two points, but eight rebounds center. It's yeah, surprising to see Tesk with such few points this late into a game that has so many points in it. But ultimately, I think it's because the Wolverines are just finding wide open looks from the arc, and why would you not take them if they're right there? Every player that has stepped onto the court for the Wolverines tonight has cracked the scoreboard. Tesk, 73% free throw shooter coming in tonight. Knocked down the first. Get off on the second. Wrong as Dubose backed it down. That's Dubose's sixth rebound of the first half. Miles Pierre pulls up, and Miles Pierre gets his first bucket of the night. Miles Pierre averaging 5.3 points and 5.3 rebounds so far this season. Isaiah delivers with a push shot in the paint off a nice pass from Xavier Simpson. And for Simpson, it's his seventh assist of this first half as Pierre feeling it. Can't make it back to back. And it goes back to the Wolverines as we have 62 seconds remaining in this first half. A half that has been thoroughly dominated by the home team. Absolutely. I think part of the reason why the Wolverines are dominating so much on offense is the fact that they're getting assists so well. HBU, not a high assist team. Currently, Ty Dalton leads the team on the season with assists on just three a game, whereas Xavier Simpson averaging 7.3. That's ridiculous. If you just look at the score, uh, the assist numbers so far from this game, Xavier Simpson has eight assists, and every other player on the floor right now, other than Johns Jr., has at least one assist. Simpson all alone off a beautiful pass from John Teske. And Simpson continues his stellar first half for Teske. That's his second assist of the night. Pierre trying to work quickly. And he does finish amongst a forest of Wolverines. But that means that Michigan can hold for the final shot of the half. Seven seconds left. Simpson looks like he'll drive himself. Nunez with his ninth three-point attempt and gets his second make. And a huge chest bump with Isaiah Livers to finish the half on a positive note for Adrian Nunez and on a positive note for the Wolverines as Michigan is up 63 to 26 at the halftime break. Obviously Isaiah Livers is at six for six for 17 points, but just an overall incredible balanced scoring attack from the Wolverines. And as we send it to break, here's Grace Boyles with Michigan head coach Jawan Howard. Coach, you're ending the half up by 39. What is your offense doing to make this first half so successful? Well, our offense is being generated by our defense. Our defense, we're active. We're causing turnovers because we're up, we're aggressive. 
We're not allowing them to get comfortable by, by running their offensive sets. I right, have active hands and we're communicating. We have discussed him at length so far. He recorded the sixth triple-double in Michigan history this past January against Ohio State. And we're on the lookout tonight to see if he can make it to seventh and his second personal triple-double as a Wolverine in this his fourth year in Ann Arbor. Obviously helped lead the Wolverines to the championship game in his sophomore year, the national title game where they fell, Villanova Wildcats. Last year, Michigan was defeated by Texas Tech in the NCAA tournament to end their season. And that marked the departure of Matt Poole, Russ Dacus, and head coach John Beeline as Brian Gomes starts the half for the bucket to get the scoring started, the Husky. HPU, no doubt, heading into the second half, hoping to do exactly what Coach Howard was saying before we went out for the break. No doubt, they'll be treating this game as if it's 0-0 right now and just hoping to win the second half. With his signature blow by, left it for Brooke, who was maneuvering in the paint, did not finish. And Gomes, using his 6-10 frame to track down the board. And this is Dubose with a little... Simpson-esque hook shot in the paint. We have not seen that signature shot from Xavier Simpson much so far this year. But That's just but disrespectful. Dubose trying his own hand at the shot this year. And Dubose now with 11 points on 4-13 shooting. Yeah, that's just disrespectful to hit a player with their own shot. Outrageous. The Huskies have scored the first four points so far. Second half. Adrian Nunez who hit that shot to close out the first half, Simpson get the look, and Simpson with his third three of the night. Now three for four from behind the arc, showing his improvement from outside. Xavier Simpson now tonight's leading scorer for the Wolverines with 18 points. Still at that four rebound and nine assist totals. This is Gomes against Teske. And Gomes just looked over Matt, but a foul called on the floor. That's the kind of motion for the scoreboard as if saying, what more can I do? But nonetheless, a foul on the Wolverines. So HQ will get it underneath the basket. Dalton has pass deflected, but ends up Gates' hand. And you know, Gates is always eager to shoot. That one off the mark. David Gates now two for six on the night. Again, HQ's leading score on the season as again, Simpson was looking for Brooks back door, ends up in Livers' hands, and Livers again has not missed a shot still tonight as he continues his beautiful night from behind the arc. Now four for four. As Gomes just could not finish over Livers. Livers doing it on both ends. As Simpson lost the dribble to Miles Pierre. Great hands by Teske to strip it from Ty Dalton and a foul on HBU. Excellent defensive play there by John Teske as it looks like Ty Dalton going to have a good look on the knee. Coach Howard beckoning for his team to just calm down a little bit there. A lot of fast break opportunities coming quickly. Wants them to just take it a little bit slower. They've got a very comfortable lead and he was talking about the half how they shouldn't get complacent. It definitely doesn't seem like they have so far, but I think he just wants them to keep control of this game. And obviously he wants his offense to move quickly. He's told us that on many occasions, but it needs to be a controlled offense. There's no point going full run and gun and just praying and taking any shot, which is currently seemingly what HBU has been doing this game. Taking very contested shots, very low percentage shots. And you can see from which team's winning and which team's taking better shots. Bullet pass to Livers on the wing. He drove in and threw a foul on his way to the basket. We were talking about the overall shooting for the Wolverines tonight. Now up to 60% overall. How about the shooting from downtown? 11 of 21 on three-point field goals tonight. That's a 52% mark. Just an incredible job by the Wolverines and their accuracy from downtown. Livers arguably fortunate not, not to have got that foul called on the, the shot itself because he didn't get one in. So at least for now, he keeps hold of that 100% field goal percentage still. 
17 minutes left in this game. He's seven for seven. Absolutely incredible stuff from Lewis so far. And on that last play, Simpson trying to put a double team on the baseline. Benjura foul. Loco's second foul for the Huskies. Baptist allowed 39% three-point shooting in their 12 and 18 season last year. And that has troubled them tonight. As they have just given up open look after open look, and even the contestant looks and has just absolutely burned HQ. And after scoring the first four points of this half, the Huskies have now gone over two minutes without a point. This looks for some help. Livers looked a little bit confused right then. He didn't quite know what play was happening, but Simpson when in doubt, give the ball to Simpson. Simpson used a Teske screen to get all the way to the basket. And just a great job by Teske creating enough separation for Simpson to find an angle as he's so good at doing. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Looks like it's on Jackson Stent. Transfer from Casper College in Wyoming, the senior. Dealing. Stent picked up the second foul of the night. Xavier Simpson and Isaiah Liv is taking it in turns, it seems like, to be leading the offense on this team. They just go back and forth on who has the most, who has the most numbers. Eli Brooks, Brooks. nice cut. Been, been left open a few times underneath, and maneuvering his way for a little hook, which he leaves short. And to boast another board, that's to boast his seventh rebound of the night as Pierre fires and knocks down the three. Miles Pierre, the freshman point guard, gets it to go. A thousand high school points, over a thousand high school points. So far, 16 points on the season coming into tonight as Livers was left all alone off a miscommunication from the HBU defense, which has happened numerous times tonight. And that will just only add to Livers' 1,000 field goal percentage on the night. Looks like Benjamin Uloko got hurt on that play. Referee stops game action, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout anyway as Loco's injury comes at the same time as the under-16 media timeout. Trainers check on you, Loco, as Michigan and boys enjoys a 40-point advantage, 73 to 33. Be right back, Christ. Second, this contest. Brooks again with a cut back door, could not finish the layoff, but Esky again with the court vision, and Brooks again with the movement as Dubose puts one up and splash from the corner. Dubose, that's his third three of the night, now three for five from behind the arc. Austin Baptist leading scorer tonight with 14 points. Coach Howard stands back up to give his team some direction. Seems to be a very vocal, very active coach from the bench. And he must be very tired. Doing a lot of recruitment work right now. Five-star recruit Josh Christopher is in the stands right now watching this game. So Coach Howard really doing everything that he can to get the Wolverines the best recruiting class possible. As Gates, Gate. Galen Gates has been looking for contact and a number of his shots tonight finally gets the foul call. Like it was on Xavier Simpson, who picks up his second. But Galen Gates will go to the line for his three. He struggled tonight. Again, we mentioned he leads the South Limb Clump 20.7 points a game. A 50% shooter on the year is Gates, 42% from behind the arc. As he rims out the first free throw. Came in tonight four for four from the line. Yeah, absolutely, as you were saying, Ben, statistically, Gates looks like he's a fantastic shooter, and for this season so far, he has been. But tonight, 
His misses haven't even been close. They've been banging all off of the glass. Not even coming close to the rim on several occasions. But clearly just having a bad night for him. And what a night to have it. Coming up against a non-conference team like Michigan. Not the kind of night where you want to be having a bad shooting game. And unlike Dubose, Gates is efficient with a 50% field goal mark on the year. Again, Dubose shooting just 28 in HBU's game against Oral Roberts as delivers his first miss of the night. But again, against the game against Oral Roberts, Dubose went just 2 for 17. And he's got it right now. Gives it up to Gates. Again, a tough shot, but Jalen Gates able to knock it home over the top of Eli Brook. Yeah, he was looking for the foul call there. Really trying to get to that line. Seems as though Gates' number one priority has been looking to draw contact rather than actually trying to make the shot. But he got it to go there. Gates now with 10 points on the night. What's been intriguing to me so far and so in this game, for Michigan's offense and equally HBU's defense, Michigan is running very similar plays, and HBU just seemingly cannot adapt. There have been several times where Michigan have set up screens that have allowed them to have a wide open look in the left hand corner, and HBU just can't seem to react to it. HBU now on an 8 0 run over the past minute and a half to cut a 40 point deficit to 32 as Nunez with a great backdoor cut and a great pass by Isaiah Livers to find him. And for Nunez, a player that has struggled to shoot tonight. That has to feel good as a nice finish there by Juan Murphy. Sophomore Cornelius, North Carolina. Simpson dancing on the perimeter. Comes, comes out the hedge. Here's Simpson again finds a lane. Just a little too strong with the left hand. And this is Gates who splits Michigan defenders and finds a way to get to the rim. That was an impressive play by Jalen Gates. Yeah, that, much, that looks much more like the Jalen Gates, the fans of HBU have become accustomed to seeing. A six foot zero, Delma, Texas. 50% shooting on the night at four of eight as Nunez is catch a shoot. A little off, but test great work on the offensive board, but not able to control it. And a couple subs now for each team as Castleton and Julius back back in for Wolverines. Nunez takes a seat. Michigan just won for their last seven, whereas Houston Baptist has hit their last five shots on a 12-2 overall run. Pierre had the ball on his hip, able to muscle a shot up, could not get it to fall, but on the offensive board, a foul on the Wolverines. David DeJulius with significantly less minutes so far this game than he usually has had this season. Just nine minutes so far this game. On the season, he's averaging 27 minutes a game. He's been their main man off the bench. We've seen significantly less of him tonight. He's shooting just one of four from the field, one of two from three, and has just one rebound. Usually, he's been the main stat guy coming off that bench. What's been incredible about David DeJulius this season, in my opinion, is the fact that his rebounding numbers have been so high. Michigan has not been a good rebounding team so far, but there we go. That's what we come to expect from David DeJulius. He's going to knock down those open looks. That's exactly what we want to see. Dubose looks like he was trying to pass that ball, came up with air. DeJulius this year, 6.3 points per game. Just a tad bit better than a 0.6 point per game mark last year. But a great time for him and a great time for Michigan, who maintains a 33 point because of his court vision and the way he controls the offense, similar to Brady does a fellow Michigan alum with the New England Patriots. As we resume play right now, Simpson with the ball in his hands. Five out there for the Wolverines. Simpson, Castleton, Livers, Bajima, and Julius. As Castleton tries to move down low and gets it to drop. Colin Castleton, who had a stretch of seven straight points in the first half, gets his first bucket of the second half. 
now with nine on the night. And Pierre cutting back door all alone. Great pass from Quan Murphy up top. What was so impressive about that previous play from Xavier Simpson, in my opinion, is the way that he controlled his body. That's something that often gets overlooked. But the absolute best small guys have fantastic body control. His center of gravity, he went all the way to the floor. His hand touched the ground. He pushed himself back up, and he takes it to the rim there. Fantastic body control in the air as well. A little finger roll by Xavier Simpson, and Dubos counters right back. He's Shot got that wiggle. Own. He's got that wiggle in the post that you just can't eat. And now Ty delivers for the team lead on the Wolverines as Julius with a jab step, but could not hit the three from the corner. Double team on Dubose, who steps back on the baseline. And two HBU Huskies went for that board. Ended up tossing them possession, and Livers all alone off a beautiful pass. Another beautiful pass from Xavier Simpson. Livers ahead of the defense, a stuff for Isaiah Livers. Isaiah Livers now with a career high, surpassing a 22 point previous career high mark he set last week against Creighton, now with 24 on the night. And we are seeing this junior blossom right in front of our eyes. Absolutely. Isaiah Liver is playing like a big and offensive player of the week right now. 24 points on 9 of 10 shooting, 90% from the field. And you'll see that a lot of the time in bigger men when all they're doing is layup. But Liver shoots the ball almost, well, probably just as much as he takes it through the paint. And Julius tried to save that one to Liver's. Just a little out of control. Would have added to the already very long highlight reel tonight for Michigan as their lead is 35. And Brandon Johns Jr. checks in. Looks like Livers, now that he has his career high, will probably take a seat for the rest of the night. And with that last pass to Livers, Xavier Simpson has tied his career high and assists with 12 as Simpson a new number of beautiful dishes tonight as John Jr. battled with Iayemi died but the four year career of Xavier Simpson 12 assists tonight matching his career back with nine minutes left you can easily see Xavier Simpson get up to 15 assists in this game the only obstacle to that Josh might be how much longer Juwan Howard opts to keep him in the game. Absolutely. Michigan holding such a large advantage. And this is Zach Iayemi at the line, a freshman, who head coach Ron Cottrell said, really good hands and footwork, but can also step out and hit that jump shot 15 to 8 feet inside the arc. As that was he went two for two from the free throw line right there. Intriguing there, Ben. Juwan Howard motioned towards him, David DeJulius walked over to Xavier Simpson and said something to him. I don't know whether they were calling a play or what was happening, but good to see that communication from Juwan Howard coming off that bench. And Xavier Simpson, another beautiful pass, his 13th assist of the night, found Castleton underneath for the N1. But Xavier Simpson just continues to show his handles and go off the dimes tonight. And that is a new career high in assist for Xavier Simpson. 13 tonight against the Huskies as Aston finishes the three-point play the old-fashioned way. And just an overall satisfying play from one to five for the Wolverines. Absolutely. And again, while that was going on, Jawan Howard pulls over Cole Bajima to have a conversation with him about his game. Great to see Cole getting some more minutes as well. But enough about Michigan's head coach. Just to focus a little bit on HBU's head coach. Ron Cottrell, this is his 29th year with HBU. His entire coaching career has been with this team. They have a record of 487 to 410, and he's truly seen it all. No doubt he's seen losses similar to this, and no doubt he's seen wins a lot greater than this one. Another one just to add to the record book, and no doubt they'll move on from this one, go back to the drawing board. With eight minutes left in this one, Michigan leading. Like 38 points. 36 now. 
Ron Cottrell, who is now the associate director of HQ Athletics, after spending 15 years as the primary director of that department. Miles Pierre rattled on the jumper on that last play, and this is Quan Murphy eating Castleton to the basket for a layup of his own. And still in the game here, with just over eight minutes remaining. I think we can expect to see Simpson stay in the game for not a lot longer, in all honesty. He's their main ball handler, but I don't see how we're keeping him for longer than he needs to at this point. And he'll come out right now as Eli Brooks will come catch Simpson, who finishes off an excellent night, 22 points on 8 for 10 shooting, 3 for 4 from behind the arc, 3 for 4 from the free throw line, 5 rebounds, 14 assists. Him, who scored a few buckets in the first half, but now he has career highs in both points and blocks. 12 points on the night, 5 for 6 underneath from the field goal percentage and 2 blocks tonight. So a great night for Castleton and is one of many Wolverines tonight to have a career night. But I mentioned before the backcourt that's currently in this game for the Wolverines, Julius and Brooks. Absolutely. So right now, we have a look at what this Michigan team could look like next year. Franz Wagner, no doubt, will be in the mix too. With the backcourt of David DeJulius and Eli Brook, someone's going to take up the mantle of the most prominent ball handler on this team once Xavier Simpson graduates. It's intriguing to see whether it's going to be DeJulius or Eli Brook who picks up that mantle. DeJulius tonight six points as he misses there. Eli Brooks with seven points. They've combined for just five of 18 shooting as eight. Still in the game, but off the mark for Galen Gates tonight. Brooks just took his eye off the ball as he was catching the pass, and Dalton, not really sure where Ty Dalton was going with that ball, and Castleton will all alone for the slam. Another transition dunk for the Wolverines. They've had a number of those tonight, mostly engineered by Xavier Simpson, but that one on a great pass. As Pierre launches and comes up with air. Now called on the rebound. That last pass was from Eli Brooks. As Brooks has his sixth assist of the night. So even though Brooks is shooting just three for 11 from the field, he's been distributing the basketball very effectively. who we've highlighted tonight. Backcourt mate Eli Brooks with a little pull up and gets it to snuggle home. Eli Brooks with his eighth and ninth points of the night. Brian Gomes who tries one long range. The center stepping out but could not connect. And John showing off his handles. Get that ball across half court. Austin Davis, who has checked in the game so tonight for the Wolverines, with a post move, a beautiful one at that, and gets it to fall. Austin Davis, the 6'10 senior from Onstead, Michigan. Get this about Austin Davis, he wears a size 18 shoe, and using every size, every bit of that size for that shot. Gomes misses two in a row. And Some nice footwork. Nice yes. footwork from the big man as well. Just Bajima, a freshman, way off on that three-pointer. Got his first collegiate points earlier tonight, and a great hustle by Davis to save that ball. And a travel called on Julius, who looks perplexed by the call, but a turnover nonetheless. That is Julius' second turnover of the night. Just the tenth overall for the Wolverines compared to 18 for the Huskies. Juan Murphy checked back in for HBU. Juan Murphy was certainly a high school standout, averaged 25 points per game as a high school senior. Murphy looking for Yemi underneath, but Gates picks it off, has an open look, and tried to bank home that three, but it was off the mark as it goes out of bounds. We have not seen Benjamin Uloko return 
from the locker room ever since he went down with that injury. Still been out. Not that it matters so much for the result of this game, but going forward, he's certainly an important piece of the H3 rotation. Absolutely. A lot of turnovers tonight for HBU. 18 turnovers on the night, and Michigan has absolutely capitalized on them. As we made the break, the media break, Michigan had 25 points off of turnovers from HBU. Definitely something they're going to want to bring down as the season progresses. It's up to Julius in transition, and Julius with the left hand and one. David Julius again showing some chemistry with his backcourt mate Eli Brooks and able to convert for two and possibly three in transition. And fan favorite, CJ Bad will check into the game. You can hear the elation in the crowd before he's even done anything, Ben. CJ Bayard who crushed popularity, gained popularity among Michigan fans after hitting his three-pointer in the 2018 NCAA tournament and started as a student manager with this roster, turned into a walk-on and played five games in his freshman year, now a junior from Novi, Michigan. There's no doubt in my mind that as soon as CJ Bad gets hold of the ball, the fans will start demanding a three. It's what he's become known for, and I'm telling you, Ben, if he hits the three tonight, this crowd will go wild. He has two points total on the season so far, has played just a minute played in 13 games last year, averaged just under two minutes per game. A player that hasn't seen a ton of action since being promoted from that student manager position, but as you mentioned, always riles up this crowd when he checks in. He's looking for that ball. You know he wants it, too. CJ Beth's not afraid to take that shot. He'll give the crowd what he wants. See if he gets a look tonight. Now Julius with a beautiful spin move against Gates. Oh. And Baird with a bad pass. Gates pulls up in transition for three and snuggles at home. Galen Gates, although he hasn't had the most optimal shot selection tonight, has certainly put his scoring prowess on display against a Power 5 program and a Power 5 crowd at the Chrysler Center. Baird on the wing. Julius blows right by Gates. Beautiful pass, and Austin Davis with the strong finish. A beautiful setup from the Julius as he blew by Jalen Gates. Little volleyball action here as Gates brings one up again. One thing I will say about Jalen Gates, he certainly gets up for his jump shots, creates a ton of elevation, and he's able to put that ball up as Johns Jr. A little too strong on the bank shot. The crowd's getting restless. They won that CJ bad three. Julius works off a Davis screen just inside of the arc. Hits a two-point pull-up shot. And a great shot by David Julius, although it might not have been the crowd's preferred choice. As Michigan has reached the 100-point mark for the first time since November 21st of 2017 when they scored 102 against Chaminade. And this is Bajima wide open from the corner and Cole Bajima even gets in on the scoring party. Cole Bajima now with five points on the night, but a clean shot there to add to Michigan's total as Jackson Stent and not respond with a three of his own. Bajima goes crashing out of bounds trying to obtain that rebound, but a great moment for the for, the, for the, these two teams. They played three times in the past, Michigan capturing all three victories. Most notably on December of 2013, Michigan dominated the Huskies by 54, but a matchup in 2015 where the Wolverines won by 25 stuck out to you. Yeah, absolutely. Karis Levert in that game, former Michigan player, dropped 25 points in a very similar fashion to Isaiah Livers' performance, Isaiah Livers performance tonight. Harris Levert now plays for the Brooklyn Nets and is really excelling in the NBA. He's currently out with a thumb injury, but he's been an absolutely essential piece for that Brooklyn team. And many reserves now on the floor. This is Luke Wilson playing with Rico Ozuna Harrison, who scores off a beautiful pass from Luke Wilson. And for Ozuna Harrison, who was added as a walk-on to the scout team in 2017, a great moment for Ozuna Harrison 
as Austin Davis, Jerron Falls, CJ Baird, and Luke Wilson join Ozuna Harrison. Baird pulls up for three, and Baird joins the party, shows it off to the crowd. Everybody loves it. He's smiling, he's laughing, and Michigan is up to 109 points. Nobody can miss. That banks home a three to momentarily quiet the crowd, but nothing can get this crowd down now. Michigan with an unbelievable offensive performance tonight. And the only Wolverines who have not cracked the scoreboard, Luke Wilson with the ball right now. And number 44, Jerron Falls. They're gonna feed him. This Falls, nice move. Oh, cannot finish. It had promise. They're definitely trying to get Falls some looks down the stretch now that Bayard's on the scoreboard. As Charles Jr. A little bit off from three. As we tick under a minute to go from the Chrysler Center, Bayard bringing it up. You think the crowd wants more? Well, the fans in Chrysler are already singing Hail to the Victors. Bayard could not make it two in a row. Trying to bring this house down. Noah Thomason for HBU, who has checked into the game now for the first time. As Jones, little jumper. Ick Jones, the junior from Houston. Gets on the board here to cut the lead to 41, but as Michigan will likely hold for their last possession of the game. Wilson steps back at the free throw line and cannot get it to go. Austin Davis, a second try at it. Jerron Falls, everybody cracking the statute and Falls draws a foul on a, a fourth and fifth opportunity for the Wolverines on the last possession of the game and will pay off as Jaron Falls will make his first trip to the free throw line. And with that, J Jaron Folds, that shot, Luke Penny Wilson becomes the only player on this Michigan team who has not scored at least one point tonight. Every other player on their roster, bar Franz Wagner, had scored tonight. Everybody getting the pizza of the pie here tonight. And for Jaron Folds, someone who transferred from Columbia, those are his first points as a Michigan Wolverine. So a great moment for him. And overall, just such a satisfying night for Wolverines as they can dribble this one out. Two, one, and that will do it. A collective scoring outburst by the Wolverines to put up 111 points at the Chrysler Center and beat HBU by 43 on their home court. Absolutely, a dominant performance from the Wolverines. No doubt Coach Howard will be very happy with that one. And the story of this game has to be about Livers and Simpson. Livers with a career-high 24 points, Simpson with a career-high 4.